to really get to the depths of yourself and to the depths of your connection to source, like you do that through commitment and devotion to one person. And it's like, what do I, and, and this really hit me is this is like touched upon in this book. And then it came um, forward in that a podcast I did with Lo, the Oracle said this, and she was like, what happens when running is off the table? There's a very powerful growth opportunity when it comes to like, there's no running. It's like, we have to work through this. And mm -hmm. so many people don't work through their shit or they're unwilling to see their own mirrors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some, sometimes our best life partners can be the most triggering people to us mm -hmm. because they're helping us learn the most. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think that's also the thing in like in, li in life partnership, we've got to get clearer for ourselves on what we want. Like, are you looking for a challenging growth experience or looking for a companion and a best friend? Like, are you looking for that passion and excitement? Mm -hmm. Like different people do different things for us. And I think a lot of people don't really think about it in that way. Like, and maybe you can get a lot of the same things from one person, but we're also not meant to try and get everything from one other person. Right. Like people are mirrors for us and it can activate things within us. But at the end of the day, like it's self-sourced. I think it's interesting how many people avoid like devotion and commitment and they look for ways out of it. And I'll tell you, it's the same energy of like, yeah, I'm not surprised you can't build your own business right mm -hmm. like it's like if i ran away every time shit got harder things mm -hmm. got mirrored to me or it wasn't working or mm -hmm. i was in a shitty situation like i would not be where i am today mm -hmm. and on the other side i think there are a lot of people that stay in long-term relationships when they've been emotionally energetically out for a long time mm -hmm. and it's draining the life force energy from them 100 mm -hmm. and it's like the contract is up and everything in your life will stop moving when the contract is up <laughs>about your concert this weekend oh my god my concert experience was incredible mm -hmm. um i i truly live for these experiences like travel and concerts is what completely lights up my sacred why do you think that is like what, what do you love so much about concerts so it's changed i mean i i love the music like ever mm -hmm. since i was a kid like when i was growing up in church my favorite part was always like the worship part mm -hmm. right like so it's just music in general and like thinking whether that's the lyrics or the music itself just sound frequency um now it's become a lot of just bonding who i'm with and mm -hmm. meeting other people um I, I truly feel like i meet the best people when i go to concerts and raves and it's it's such a spiritual experience being able to like just be have one thing in common mm -hmm. with people like literally just this one thing that is so random that may or may not have anything to do with your daily life and allowing that to be what connects you and just like vibing with someone and yeah. like spending a, like four hours with people, you know, and you can really go deep with people without saying anything, you know, mm -hmm. and just being in that energy with them. Totally. So what happened this time? So this what time, the reflections? yeah, this time I was so, so close. So for everyone, I went to a Bad Bunny concert and he's like my favorite person ever. Uh, and actually, the reason I started loving him was because I went to his concert. Mm. Um, and before that, I mean, it was just kind of normal. It was just like, yeah, I mean, I like him, but it was no big deal. But feeling his energy in a space was what made me be like, I'm in love with this person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I was only like only one person was in front of me. So it was just like he was like six or seven or eight feet from me. Wow. Um, like the whole time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so really just being able to feel his energy and watch all of his facial expressions and just like have him take in all of the energy of the crowd was incredible to witness and incredible to like be a part of. Um, I also met some really incredible people and let me like pause you there. Like, yeah. what does that activate in you? Like when you're witnessing him, like, um, why is that so incredible for you? I think because it it's like. I unlock that for myself. I'm like, mm. if he, everything that he's feeling right now yeah. in a crowd, I mean, I don't know how many people, a hundred thousand people, I, I can do that too. And it doesn't necessarily mean that I want to, or I am going to definitely not singing <laughs> on a stage or rapping. Um, but it's like that reach, that connection with all those people. Like I feel it too in that moment. And I know that I, I am capable of that. Yeah. It's almost like when you hear someone's like incredible manifestation story and it, opens your mind to what's possible yeah because you're witnessing it you know well in that moment what's being facilitated is you're all on the same wavelength mm -hmm. like that's the power of everybody being on the same way like you're all literally riding the same frequency wave and he is the one kind of 
orchestrating the symphony Mm -hmm. and everybody is in that song with you you know and like bringing you into that vortex like that's Mm -hmm. the power of an event experience where you're brought into that vortex like as a community Mm -hmm. and I think like there's something indescribable about about the energy and how palpable it is like you can you can feel it Mm -hmm. you know and it reminds me of all those micro moments of like how it feels when you have that telepathic we're on the same wavelength connection Mm -hmm. with someone in your life like people talk about that but when you really are on that like damn is it expansive you know so I think that's I'm just like curious it's like we say we love these experiences but can we pinpoint what it is right right because in that moment you're connected to oneness Mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for Mm -hmm. so 100 percent, yeah and I think especially like for for an experience like what I just had um you know it's more of looking to that one person but I usually don't go to experience like experiences like that like that's a concert I usually go to where it's like a rave and it's like yeah there's respect and love for the DJ but it's it's more about just the dancing Mm -hmm. just the music Mm -hmm. just the whole crowd around you and making those connections and so it's even more so I would say that oneness of just like every single person around me is just riding this frequency wave with me and it it like all of the other barriers don't matter at all like what I do for a living, what I like your identity can kind of just melt and you're just like, it's like, you're just this little atom or like the yeah. electrons in the atom just like buzzing around. You yeah. Know? Well, and you can be whoever you want, right? That's yeah. one of the other experiences people. It's like, I can dress in my full expression mm-hmm. and I can just like be myself and I can dance as however I want. And no, yeah. it's like just full acceptance, be yeah. whoever you want. Yeah. So absolutely. the power of a container, totally the power <laughs> of a container. And like for me, um, you know, I, my whole life I struggled in, cl- in crowds a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just don't, beca- because I'm sensitive, like we were talking, we were recording another podcast earlier. Um, and I, when I started to go to all of these events, I just, there came a point where I was like, I can't just have this fighting energy all the time of like, oh, someone just came into my space. Yeah. I mean, also because it's like, well, who, who the fuck am I? Just because I got here an hour earlier, I think that I own this space. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and so I really started experimenting like, and it's, it's easy to be nice to people when like they aren't mean to you or they don't, you know, come into your space. But I started experimenting with like, when people would come into my space, can I still be the one that commands the energy? Like, Mm -hmm. can I still be the one that sets the vibrational tone? And it's like, I've just seen time and time again that I can, you know, um, there was a moment too, I didn't even tell you this yet, but there was this guy that was bothering all four of my friends that I was with. And like, I wasn't, I didn't really notice it for a minute. And then I noticed that car- that my partner noticed it. Yeah. And as soon as I like tapped into what he was feeling about it, he was telling them like, just ignore him. And I just looked back and made eye contact with the guy. And I just told him telepathically, just don't just mm-hmm. walk away. And he literally turned around and walked away. Love it. And my friends were talking about that later and they were like, yeah, he must've just like seen, like wanted to go to the other side. And I was like, Oh no, no, no. It's <laughs> like, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing is in crowds, like, like that in a situation like that, you're already on the same wavelength. So you can literally telepathically, send a message to anyone it's like receive that easily because the telepathy thing and this is what i want to explain to people like it's not just about your ability to transmit it's about the other person's ability to receive Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you can be like on par with your telepathy and your communication but if somebody is blocked to receiving it Mm -hmm. then it will feel like it's not working Mm -hmm. but in a situation like that like everybody's already on the same frequency so people will hear yeah it's one of the reasons why in those settings people meet romantic partners often yeah. because it's like there's so much telepathic communication it's like mm-hmm. you just walk up to each other and you already know each other thinking yeah so there's so many stories yeah. like that you know and like i feel like i've met truly people that even if they aren't necessarily like long-term soul fam it's like we had an experience together that we both needed yeah. in our path and in our journey and like the respect that you can have for someone after that whether it was a conversation or just a glance at each other as you're feeling yeah. this frequency is so so powerful um and then you know the people that you go with that like are in your life long term the the bonds that you create after experience an experience like that are so beautiful and yeah. so strong you know and to your point about like why i like that or why i connect to that i think it's also being revealed to me more and more it's like i'm supposed to create those vortexes yeah. and those experiences like that and 
you know, I, I think I always did know that in some way. I just didn't know how it was going to look. And now it's starting to be revealed to me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I guess let that for anyone listening, like the things that light you up the most, like they are part yeah. of what you're supposed to be doing, whether or not you can logically kind of understand exactly how they fit in in the moment. Mm-hmm. There's a reason for that. You know, there's a reason. That, and I mean, of course, yeah, everyone loves concert. Well, not everyone. My dad hates them. <laughs> but most people, yeah, we can appreciate like a concert or coming together in well, that Well, it depends way. on the type of concert, right? Well, right. It's like, <laughs> it's all, it's not all it's, concerts are the same. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, that was really our inspo for this event mm-hmm. we're throwing, right? We're like, this is like concert energy, like mm-hmm. taking people into this vortex, into this container. Like, how do we bring everybody together? What's the theme? Mm-hmm. Like everyone's dressing up like wear your best glitter you mm-hmm. know all that stuff and feeling like for a moment you can just forget the outside world mm-hmm. and strip away the ego mm-hmm. and just be your most authentic self and just like get lost in it get yeah. lost in the moment and not worry about anything yeah. you know and so i think like I, I totally can relate to i mean i love going to concerts too um for that reason like any of those experiences where we get we just it's it's the oneness What's and it's transformation for you that you've like, what's your favorite concert moment that you can think of? Oh my gosh. My favorite concert moment or just one that sticks out right now. Well, a funny one that I was just thinking about <laughs> when you're talking about, uh, maintaining your space. Mm-hmm. I wish Kelly was here to tell <laughs> you the story because <laughs> I, I went to a concert with Kelly, her boyfriend and our friend Jackie. Um, and, we first of all did not realize this concert was going to be like a sea of 21 year olds like it was it was ridiculous and (laughs) we were it's so packed like Mm -hmm. it was like i was like i could get crushed and die like and we were like okay everybody like hold your energy hold your energy like (laughs) and every and you have to understand like (laughs) kelly and rick are both like six like kelly is six feet tall like her her boyfriend is six three um and i would say jackie is just jackie's shorter than me but her and she's just so much more of like a fighter yeah like you know i'm certainly very feisty too but i was the one we were like laughing all night because nobody would get near me like i I was the only person in this entire like fucking arena where there's like like space three feet you. all around me just doing my thing and nobody would fuck with me and the three of them kept like getting in little like i i thought jackie was gonna get in a fight almost because people kept bumping into them like mm-hmm. everybody was so close but there was like this circle around me and they were like how did that happen and it was like just a big joke that of course it was me and i'm like it's just like the energy mm-hmm. like don't fuck with me yeah like, don't come near me mm-hmm. um and it worked you know so I was thinking about that because it was literally so hilarious, but it was like the image of it, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like with these tall people, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no one's fucking with me, but you know, I feel like my favorite concert moments, it's not just one moment. I feel like I've been to so many great concerts. It's like the experience. And I think this is one of the reasons why I lo- I loved things like prom. Like mm-hmm. I'm a big prom person. Like it's where you're like, you're dressed. There's a costume element. There's like a, let's step into an identity kind of element. And this is like different. It's not mm-hmm. just my everyday. I'm making this different and where you're all coming together and you're like, it's like those moments at a concert where, you know, everybody gets a wristband mm-hmm. and then the lights like the lights turn off the wristband lights turn on and you're all singing and you all are like together in that Mm -hmm. moment and like the band turns off and it's everybody just screaming their Mm -hmm. favorite lyrics and you're like getting lost in that emotion Mm -hmm. together with all these people you don't know but in that moment you're all united by one emotion and one experience and feeling that i think especially with music you can listen to someone's artwork and it can impact you so deeply like really transform your life and you also know like this person doesn't know me Mm -hmm. you know their music is going out to a gazillion people but in that moment you feel like they are actually able to receive how much this has healed me and activated Mm -hmm. me and helped me like Mm -hmm. we're connected in this moment you know and I think that's the other piece about seeing the artist on stage and like you said, their facial expressions and their moments of like holy shit and like I think for me also seeing somebody in their gift Mm -hmm. like fully seen in their gift is so so powerful um and so i think it's all those elements together it's not just i can think of like a million Mm -hmm. moments that's happened i and i tend to 
like concerts I go to, it's always very experiential. I definitely like to go to, I like to go to concerts like, like artists who are more theatrical. Mm -hmm. Like I don't tend to go to concerts where it's just the person on stage with lights. Like mm -hmm. I like theater. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want like, you know, cause some people do their, everybody does their concerts differently. Um, and so I, I tend to go where it's going to be like a whole performance. Um, I love that. And so for me, it's like that whole, I want to get lost right now. I want to get lost in another world. Mm -hmm. I want to get lost in an emotion. It's the same mm -hmm. reason why I love film, you know, and I like geek out over film. I studied film in school and college, um, and books and fantasy. It's like, I like to get lost in a world. Mm -hmm. Um, and it helps me feel like there's, you know, it's connecting with something bigger than myself and connecting with like imagination mm -hmm. and creativity and that feeling of we are limitless. Mm -hmm. We are limitless together at our core. We all have so much in common. And so I think it's, it's the whole experience. Like it's not just one moment. That's, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the point. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that you can continue to live again and again and again. Yeah. And I think that that's why I also love it because it's like, it's almost like pizza, right? It's like, I can have bad pizza, <laughs> but it's still pretty fucking good pizza. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can go to a concert 100%. even if I don't know them. Well, you're making the experience. Yeah. Right. And I think that's a thing. Like, and I've always been like this with, I mean, everything in my life. Like I go all out with everything. It's like, we're going to the Harry Potter, you know, movie eight premiere. Like I'm dressing up. Like yeah. it's like go all out, but mm -hmm. I could easily go to that same experience and like half ass it and not totally. really care. And it's like, you're not going to get the, you're not going to get the same thing out of it. So yeah. I think that's the thing. It's like with any container experience, it's how you show up. Mm -hmm. It depends, you know, what you get out of it. And it's, I see that with people I work with too. I always say at the beginning of every retreat, I'm like, you're going to get out of this, what you put into it and putting into it doesn't have to mean like it's not working, but it's like, how deeply can you receive this mm -hmm. and how fully can you be present here? And can you let this move you and take you? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be in resistance, be stuck in your ways and close your mind and close your heart? Like, are you going to speak up? You're going to communicate. Are you going to share? You know, it, it's for us, it's, it's up to us to create our own experience, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that just makes me think of the new moon and isis that you did in mm -hmm. december too and it's like to your point about how you show up like it's in the little things too mm -hmm. you know like are you already counting yourself out as you're packing for the container yeah you know like and you're like oh well i'm just gonna you know wear the most comfortable thing because i don't want to express it. like whatever yeah. it can be in such tiny details um you know because at that cacao ceremony or it wasn't necessarily just cacao but she said bring a beverage yeah and it's like okay well did you just bring water like something that you drink yeah, every single day I know. or did you make yourself something special and intentional and like pour into it knowing that this is going to be a transformational container mm -hmm. you know and you can show up to anything yeah. like that i think she said that didn't she yeah i remember that like triggered some people because she was like you came to this <laughs> you came to this live channeling event where you're having a full moon ceremony with goddess isis and you brought fucking water yeah like she said that. like come on well, i know? thought it was so funny because i was like i did make a different beverage but it was still something that i drink every day yeah. and i was like she just so called me out yeah like, <laughs> well you know what and everybody i feel like everybody knows i love my lattes like i love my beverages it's it's such a ritual for me mm -hmm. and it's this is about you know, loving the experience of life. I try to find every single like small way in my day that I can make things different and new and unique. And for me, like the way I make my beverage every morning is it's unique to that day and that mm -hmm. frequency. And we were talking about how I, the reason I love making lattes for people, like when I have all my supplies is because I'm like curating for that person, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm like making a potion essentially. Yeah. And for me myself, it's like every, because I will make, I make a beverage for pretty much every call I get on. Um, thankfully now we're at the place where like, you know, every call I get on is kind of like, it's a big call. It's an mm -hmm. important call. It's like, we're having a membership call or we're doing a channeling or I'm teaching, I'm teaching a class or it's like, and so every time I go into that, I'm making my beverage like as a ritual of you know, what frequencies are going to prepare me for this. So mm -hmm. everything is, it's a sacred process. Mm -hmm. And the second I'm just doing something out of habit and routine, which don't get me wrong. I do a lot of things out of habit and routine. That's an important part. Like for me of, I feel like my success, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm going to eliminate decisions where I don't need to make them. But then there are other intentional things that I'm using as a vibrational indicator of like, this is a special ceremony. Mm -hmm. And so that means a special, it's the same way. Like if it's a special event, what do you do? You buy a special outfit. Exactly. Right. But it's like, what if we showed up to every single day? Like it's a special event mm -hmm. because when you do that, you're expecting a miracle mm -hmm. and a transformation every single day. Today is a special fucking day. Mm -hmm. And a day being special is not just 
what happens by chance it's have you set yourself up vibrationally and decided this is going to be a special fucking day Mm -hmm. and that's really important absolutely it's like i wonder you know have you ever had a day of course we all have where it's like seemingly you didn't do anything different and suddenly it's just the best day ever it's like i wonder though was i really intentional because you know every morning i put intention into my Mm -hmm. beverage too it's like what affirmation did i say that day yeah and we won't always be able to know but it's like you know what 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 did i journal about especially that day Mm -hmm. because we're always activating what we're open to you know even when it's seemingly out of habit or it's something that we still do all the time yeah. for ourselves. I also think like for me, when we're bringing, when I, at least when I'm bringing in new things, that makes me more present mm-hmm. because it's not just routine. So I'm like yeah. actually present to it and I'm able to connect more of the signs and synchronicities and like, whoa, I did that. And then this happened. Mm-hmm. And then that, like I'm able to connect it more versus not being able to see all the signs yeah. line up. If totally. that makes sense. Yeah. Totally. Um, so I would love to hear about your new book because it is so close to being out i can't wait to read it well it will it will be out but it's it'll be out okay Listen amazing it's out everyone gets to read it <laughs> <laughs> we record um, these all out of order yeah i mean as we record this it's going to come out on thursday okay so it'll be out perfect yeah um you know just my last th- the way i do everything <laughs> at the last minute because i'm a psychopath the thing about this i'm like watching all my friends launch their books and it's like this like eight month process oh, wow. and like a million events and i think that's great and that's beautiful and i definitely my first book launch i it was the whole thing and i there's a piece of me that really thinks i'm like i should be doing that for every book but when you do so many books yeah. you're just kind of like you know yeah. every book is a big event but i don't need 800 events necessarily to mm-hmm commemorate it but i also think i was thinking about this and i also feel like because i do really want to just write a christina book like my poetry book was really good for me with that but i i do want to and my plan is to write more books just as me not Mm -hmm. channeled which is what i've always wanted to do and i'm excited for that and i think when i start doing a lot more books that are like from me I will want to make it more of a ceremony. Like these are so sacred and I'm honored to bring them through, but there's something almost weird to me about like kind of making a big, like (laughs) it's like, it's yeah, I channel it, but it's not like my book. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. (laughs) So what is the process like of channeling a book for you? Yeah. So these, there's different ways I, I channel books. So manifestation mastery and the codes of divine love and then white tablets of Melchizedek. I all, I trance channeled, which the way that happens is I get told a date. I get told and it's, you know, depending on the book, it was one or two weekends. So tell me the dates. And well, obviously the, like any being, any book that I'm writing, I have a relationship with that being like, I've been working with that being for a long time. So, um, and, and, and over the years it's, there are certain beings that I have soul contracts with that are like, you know, main guides for me have been for a long time. And they have asked me, you know, like, will you scribe for me? Because a lot of these energies, these non-physical energies are looking for ways to share things and mm-hmm. looking for like a voice boxes, people who can help them bring it into the physical for us, especially beings who kind of want to, mm, I think, cause I work with a lot of ascended masters mm-hmm. and there have been a lot of stories told about the ascended masters and a lot of ideas and especially those types of energies are like i kind of want to set it straight Mm -hmm. you know because people will say anything but nobody they're not here you know so there's that kind of contract and there are certain beings that have asked me to write things and i'm like nah like check in (laughs) later you know like i don't know um and so that's it's a project that isn't it's like hey are you willing to do this we would like to do this with you and i can say yes or no Mm -hmm. So it's the first piece. And if I say, yeah, I want to do that. Sounds great. Um, then I get given the date and I book a place away and over that date. And I am in my vortex. You haven't seen me in, in one of these situations yet. I'm in my vortex. I don't talk to anybody the whole weekend. Um, you know, I'm very much like in that ceremony space the whole weekend. And I sit down on my computer sometime in the morning and I 
go in a trance mm -hmm. you know I, I just have my I open up my computer you know I connect in do all my protection I do all that it's usually I usually start around like 10 a.m because I've spent I wake up and I will spend a whole morning kind of like doing all my ceremony mm -hmm. I you know I pull cards I connect in I do my energy work I'm setting up this I do like really intense clearings wherever I'm at and every day it's like there's a lot more energetic prep yeah. you know and I'm, I meditate for a while. I get into the vibration. I usually will talk to the being a bit, like kind of preparing me, all of that. And then I, I go into it. And I would say usually I start around 10 a.m. That Some of them I didn't start until like the after. I didn't start till like after lunch because that was just taking me a while. Because mm -hmm. it's, so, it's so much more about that vibrational prep than anything yeah. else. And then once I'm in, I just kind of zonk out. I go into a trance. Um, I, when I'm writing in trance, I'm you know, I'm in another dimension. It looks like what I say, windows XP screensaver, um, colors, you know, <laughs> black and colors. And I, it, my hands are just moving. So, mm -hmm. so the being is just, you know, using my body and I'm just writing, writing it. And while that's happening, while I'm in windows XP land, I am getting like, I'm getting the the messages. I don't know the exact words are saying, but I'm more getting visuals or feelings. So I know what the transmission is. Mm -hmm. But that's very different than like reading the book word for word. So yeah. I don't necessarily always know how things are phrased, but I do like when I read it back, if they use analogies, for example, mm -hmm. I'll remember like, oh yeah, they showed me that analogy. So mm -hmm. I'm getting the transmission just in a different way. Um, and I just do that until there's usually a stopping point, you know, like a stopping point. I might get hungry or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely my, I, I can talk about my diet also, um, but I take a break and then I usually do an afternoon session and then I, you know, have a nice early evening and I take a bath, I go on a walk, I just kind of settle in. I don't like outside input, go to sleep and I do the same thing the next day. So it depends on, you know, the, the book and how long it, it takes, but I'm not actually writing. I think people think I'm like writing from like 6am to like 10. It's not like that. It's like usually two, two to three hour sessions a day. And, and that's just kind of it. And it comes through. Yeah. It just, it comes through. I, um, I don't know what I'll do next time. I mean, it's, I, I don't like have a rule about it. I just follow however it goes for each book. Uh, with these books, I did do like cleanses going, going into each of them. Um, I know one of them, I was like pure, I was definitely vegan. Um, one, I was like on a fruit cleanse and one, I was on just a raw milk cleanse. So I definitely like to keep my body just like uh, up until this point. I don't know that I'll do that next time, but I don't need to because mm -hmm. that this has also been overlapping with like, I'm a lot more integrated now and mm -hmm. in how I'm channeling because I also don't have to go into trance anymore, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of these, while I wrote, I wasn't doing my blended mm -hmm. channeling. I was doing like straight trance and a lot was changing within my physical body. So that's basically, you know, what happened. So this most recent book I did over two different weekends. Um, and I mean, it's long, it's twice, it's almost twice the word count of my first book. So it was, it was meaty and I was, I was tired. Like I was just really, it's like your hands are moving so fast. Mm -hmm. Um, and so then I sit on it and then eventually, you know, every book's been different. I, when it's time to edit, I'm like reading it back. Like it's the first time. Yeah. And there's so many spelling error, you know, cause I'm just like going so fast. So I'm, my editing process is fixing the spelling errors, separating it out paragraphs because it's usually like one big long, wow. like one big long thing. So I separate yeah. out paragraphs, I separate out chapters. Um, and I'm like receiving it, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like really sitting with it because it's almost like every sentence you're like, fuck yeah um so it takes me a lot longer to edit mm -hmm. it than it does to write it mm -hmm. so that's pretty much what the channeling has has been yeah. yeah it's so fascinating and then you know you always talk about when you are receiving it for the first time how it's activating you as a reader mm -hmm. as a receiver much like maybe you know after you would watch the oracle calls and mm -hmm. it's like you're able to learn too and you know, I think with this being a relationship book, it's something that we desperately, desperately need on the planet right now. All yeah. of us are going through upgrades, transformations, just so many different um, iterations of all of our relationships. Mm -hmm. So how has it been activating, changing your perspectives? How has it been affecting you as you've been reading it back? Yeah, so 
It's so funny because there's definitely been a number of periods in the last few years where I was like, this is really a really like relationships are on the chopping block right mm-hmm. now. Like there's a lot of changes, but this topic of relationship, I've never felt so intensely as coming up in the collective as it is right now. Um, there's like this like thickness or this deepening. And I think a lot of people are, there are a lot of breakups happening, mm-hmm. but there are a lot of like deepenings of mm-hmm. current connections. You know what I mean? It's like a yeah. new iteration of the same relationship. It's like almost like a maturity or an, it, there's like this mission kind of energy to it. You know, I just think that the frequency around relationship is really changing right now uh, more than ever before. And you know, it's funny. I mean, with this book, I was really mad at myself. Like my ego, I was, yeah. I mean, it's, I have human shit around yeah. it. And I was really mad at myself that it had been two years and I hadn't edited it because I do know there is a timeliness to my books. Obviously things are evergreen, but with channeled information, I do feel it's very timely, like mostly. Um, and there's a lot of, I was just talking to somebody else about this with channel work. I'm like, they were talking about a few channels they they love and I'm like I love their stuff too and there was a lot of stuff that's outdated like it it was it was pure and true and accurate as it came in and so many timelines have changed Mm -hmm. recently that like we kind of need to ask these same questions now Mm -hmm. um because you know we're always making choices that are Mm -hmm. shifting collective timelines and frequencies so I was feeling like, oh my God, this book has to come out. Like, why did it get downloaded at that time? I need to get it. I usually try and like to get things out within a year mm-hmm. and it had been two years and I was really upset with myself. And now that it's coming out, I'm like, wow, this is actually perfect timing as it always is. Mm-hmm. But you know, sometimes we forget myself included. It, it is. And when I downloaded this, I was you know, it had been maybe like two or three months. I had just gone through a really intense breakup. I had been in a relationship with somebody for two years. We lived together and it was a really, really hard breakup for me. I, it was the hardest breakup I I had been through. Um, I'm really grateful to say like every uncoupling experience I, I had had up until that point was just, was, you know, it was very like, loving and amicable and like we stayed friends and it was just it was a really tough breakup so I had a lot of healing to do after that and I was kind of fresh on the other side of it when this came in and I think it and it that original transmission without reading it but just receiving the energy I it helped me a lot it helped me a lot it was also the same time when I was going through my twin flame activation and Mm -hmm. I had just learned about that and met that person and everything that turned on within me and so I had a lot of questions about all this and Mm -hmm. I was like what the fuck is going on and so this book I was excited for this because I wanted some answers and it also felt like the most challenging thing I had channeled so far because I had you know resistances around it I think I mean I I know I'm not the only one for sure but relationships is probably the stickiest Mm -hmm. part part of my life for me it's like Mm -hmm. the place where I learn the most you know Mm -hmm. um I have my most karma in that in Mm -hmm. that realm so it it challenges me the most and when I'm channeling something I have to go through personal life experiences like clear the channel to be able to even receive it and I had realized at the time how much I had gone through with and there were a lot of French I I also had just had some dramatic closures of Mm -hmm. friendships like people who I thought were going to be my close friends forever and it completely broke my heart. Like it felt like out of nowhere, I felt like just betrayed Mm -hmm. is how I felt. And so my heart was shattered in a lot of directions. And I realized like all that had to happen for me to go through some life experiences to kind of like prepare me to receive Mm this. And so that was all going on, you know, and then in this period of, I don't know, in, in this period of sitting on it and then releasing it, I, I, I've i changed so much in the last year and obviously, and I think that's one of the things that's hard for me about relationships. Like I know how quickly I change and I know how quickly I can outgrow things and people and that scares me. It scares me. But also there's a lot of people that I don't outgrow and I just know it's very much a matter of like, is this person going to grow alongside me or not? And like, that's not up to me to control, but I was definitely like underlying questioning things in my, in my own relationship and 
reading the book, I just like when I finally read the book back, it was like a giant message to me, you know, it just felt like a giant message to me. And I, you know, cried a lot. I took a lot of my time with it. It was like opening up a lot of emotions for me, really making me realize like, you know, places where I'm not being fully honest, even if it's hard to be honest, like I'm not, I'm Mm -hmm. not being love, Mm -hmm. like to really love someone like is to tell them the truth. And I think a lot of times we can suppress our truth or not want to share our feelings because we don't want to hurt someone, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, but we are hurting them when we're not being honest. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, a lot of this book poses, well, if you flip the situation around, like what would feel loving for you, you know? And so the whole, the whole message of this is like, what does it look like to live in the energy of divine love? And we talk about that like 5d consciousness, but what does that actually look like? Mm -hmm. We're so far off from that. Mm -hmm. We're so far off from it. And when you look at relationships, people are in friendships, romantic relationships, family, you know, they talk a lot about family in there and like obligation energy and how, you know, they're like, how come your standards are different for family members than they are your partner or your friends? It's like family can just get away with stuff, basically. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot of really challenging questions in there and about being authentic and where are you holding on to things and, um, you know, things I know, but the right question at the right time really opens up a lot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I, you know, it was really through this experience, like reading that book back, I, I realized like, my our contract was up yeah you know in my in my current relationship like a con- our contract was up and that was really hard for me um that was really hard for me and so I had that conversation and I think that that this book kind of like gave me the courage to really recognize my emotions and admit them to myself and like take action on them mm-hmm and I needed that. And I know a lot of people like in our community have been going through something similar. And so, you know, we had a lot of those conversations and a lot of truths like came out on, on both sides. And I think that th- what I realized I really needed through as I was reading this book back was there was kind of one experience I had yet to live because I know everything I channel, I either have lived or Mm, have to live. mm -hmm. And that one experience was the conscious uncoupling. Mm. And, (laughs) you know, that term is so buzzy, but let's just use the term, you know, it's like, what does it look like to, I don't know what it is about the word break up. Like, I don't love the term, but it's like separate with love Mm -hmm. and also separate without such a finality about like, what's the next, what's the next step. And when we, decided to you know separate it's like we we and we're, we live together so we we're forced to have so many conversations again and again and like work with each other and like I think we both again mirrored a lot for each other um it like forces you to be there for each other through it mm-hmm. not that we we wouldn't it, it, but it's like this very weird thing of how can you have so much love for somebody but like this isn't in alignment right now yeah and you know, there was definitely, there's definitely that part of the ego that wants to understand like, well, what does this mean? Well, what does this look like? Like Mm -hmm. what are the logistics and, and what does this look like big picture? And that, that other piece of me where I was like, you know, uh, we just have to honor what's true right now. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason it's true right now. And, uh, I'm really grateful for the whole experience because like, I don't know, I think in, in an interesting way, it made us stronger as a unit, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and, and uh, like we love each other so much. We have so much love for each other. I'm like so grateful for him. And that's why this is like so hard when it's like, why is this feeling off? And at the end of the day, like we're on the same page and it, you know, I think (laughs) this book helped him a lot. I, I told you guys like, you know, we were having a lot of these very difficult conversations, uh, and it's not easy with like, with someone you love, mm-hmm. you know, like telling them like there's something off here mm-hmm. and he ended up reading the book <laughs> one night because mm-hmm. he couldn't sleep. And the next day it was like his energy totally changed. And I go, what inspired mm-hmm. this? 
and we were just so much more on the same page and he was like i actually read the book i read the mm-hmm. chapter about conscious uncoupling and that was like really powerful for me and mm-hmm. and made me feel so grateful like thank you for having this one copy of the book delivered <laughs> on time <laughs> totally. and just that he could he could like re- receive that and yeah. how much it impacted him and like we both could finally get to the same place where mm-hmm. because i was just like look all i know is what i know now mm-hmm. um and all i know now is like i need space for myself mm-hmm. like i need i need space for myself i need to f- I, I know the things i need to focus on i i know how i'm feeling when i'm just by myself right now like that's yeah. what i need and there are certain things like i want in a partnership that i'm not getting right now mm-hmm. and it's like, and I have so much love for you and I know all these things. Yeah. And so because I know all those things, like I need to separate to figure mm-hmm. it out. And, you know, at first he really definitely was like, you know, what does all that mean? And what does that look like big picture? And then after the book, he came to me and he goes, I just, it really hit me about authenticity mm-hmm. and like, we both have to be dedicated to our own authenticity a hundred percent. And we realized that, you know, we realized a lot about a lot of the dynamics we had created and living together. And he was like, I, I realized how you've kind of melded into my frequency and I melded into yours and neither of us are, are like fully on our own personal game. And like, we need to separate and get fully our, on our own like personal game, like mm-hmm. fully in our own authenticity and then like see what happens from there. And like, that's mm-hmm. the only next step. And like, we're very on the same page with that. And, um, yeah, it's like, it's really emotional, mm-hmm. you know, it's really emotional, but, the I think you know the book certainly like gave me the courage to have those conversations and it but it's been so beautiful to go through that with him and just to be able to speak so openly I think sometimes in breakups people like they shut down mm-hmm. you know and I told him I said I don't I want you to lean in not shut down as we mm-hmm. move this process and we have both been like brutally lovingly honest with each other about everything and I feel like we've had the most growth in our relationship during this uncoupling process because of like all the ways he's pointing out like i i'm not feeling like i was getting this and i'm saying well i don't feel like i'm getting this Mm -hmm. and like there's a different i don't know a different type of conversation comes out when you're finally at the like yeah we're separating and Mm -hmm. i feel like i've learned so much about myself through that um and he's learned a lot about himself and we talked a lot about like no matter what this contract is up and like i you know i had gotten home I was traveling I got home and I just I felt I knew when I got home I was like it's done like I could just feel it be done and I felt it intuitively be done before my brain had gotten there before Mm -hmm. my heart had gotten there and it like I was not all mapped out Mm -hmm. and even when I had that conversation with him about like that I like thought that that we need to, to separate he like again it was like I was vibrationally there but my heart and my mind were not. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those things where I, I, I say everything and I'm like, I'm starting to catch up yeah. on a 3D level. And I'm just like, I'm not okay. Like, and it was just all jumbled, you know? Um, and I think that's the thing about following your truth. Like for me, and it becomes more highlighted in a romantic relationship where somebody else is involved, but I'm never fully on board. Like, you know what I mean? Everywhere. Like, that would take me a long time. And sometimes it's me taking action on mm-hmm. what I know my inner truth is that forces the rest of me to catch up mm-hmm. without that. I would never catch up. Mm-hmm. So there is a lot, you know, that needed to kind of catch up there vibrationally. Um, and you know, I was just intuitively like seeing like this contract is up and we talked about that and we've talked about like, Hey, this we're completing this contract and these are all the things we're leaving with this contract we're so grateful for all of these things so what we're grateful for about each other we learned all these lessons and we've also talked about like what's the energy of the new contract Mm -hmm. you know like for each of us individually like what our own individual intentions for our lives and who we want to become and like being our best selves then also you know what are the energies within our new contract no matter how that plays out and i think you know the thing with a lot of these types of soul connections when we talk about this spiritually is people will attach a human thing onto it right for example with twin flame people will attach a human thing onto it or with a soulmate people will attach a human thing onto it whether like just because someone's your soulmate doesn't mean they're a life partner mm-hmm. <laughs> um you know and we've got to like for me it's that soul contract piece where with you know him we're like this is our 
the next phase of our contract whatever happens on a human level like and it's kind of like hey we're gonna become our most authentic selves and see where we realign then Mm -hmm. like no matter how that plays out with these human terms or labels this is still the energy of the soul contract Mm -hmm. right um and i think that's more of like the spiritual maturity that especially like the book is asking us to step into of can you understand these soul contracts without requiring things of people Mm -hmm. like yeah we you can be my soulmate you can be my you know have i can have a powerful soul contract with you that does not mean you're i'm obligated to you're obligated to me in a in a human way from whatever i'm deciding like just Mm -hmm. because i have a soul contract with you doesn't mean that i need to be your best and hang out with you every day it Mm -hmm. could mean we just need one conversation or it could mean Mm -hmm. i i record a piece of content i never talk to you and you hear it from me and that changes something Mm -hmm. like that's the thing about contracts Mm -hmm. um and and even soulmates you know and we have soulmates who that wasn't this dynamic but karmic soulmates right Mm -hmm. we have soul contracts with people who can sometimes step in and like blow our lives up whether or not that was their intention, that's how we perceive it, right? Like that can be the contract. Um, And I know that one of the things that we were contracted to teach each other was like, like this depth of a loving relationship um, and this level of like a conscious relationship. And and I think for both of us, I've never been so met and expanded spiritually and he, same thing for him. And like, we both have gotten super clear, like, what we were supposed to teach each other and what we learned from each other with that iteration of the contract. And now it's like, we're both upgrading and like becoming these new versions of ourselves. And like in a new contract, we're here to teach each other something new, Mm -hmm. you know? So, but I told him like, as we were talking through all the reasons why I thought we should separate and like why it wasn't resonant. And there are a lot of things that like we could work on. Right. I was like, I we could just try and stay in this and work on all this or we can close the container let the energy reset and start something totally fresh and I told him like just who I am as a person personally I am a bigger proponent of like close the container like shut it down refresh brand new start because I was like I know how it goes with me and I don't want to risk any energetic threads from the past kind of moving with me into the future like and I think there's something really powerful about that of like a clear closure a clear ceremony and you know for every couple that could be different like Mm -hmm. for some you know we were talking about this in membership too I was like you know you could be in a marriage just together have like a ceremony together and like complete that version of the contract and then start a new one you don't Mm -hmm. need to go through a separation necessarily Mm -hmm. but I think sometimes you know for me that was like all I know is we both need separate time right now and I think the more that you know we both thought about it it was like a lot of this work that needs to get done in the relationship it's my self-work and his self-work and I do think it's really helpful to do there's certain work we need to do alone you know um and there like i know this about myself with transformation like i need to really be in my own vortex and in my in my own field and it's one of the things that honestly has been difficult for me with romantic relationships like it's it's one of the things i always like wonder about like if i'm going to be in one long term you know because i know how much i, I change and like how I want to go off and do my own thing and not be energetically tethered. And like, even the stuff I talked about with the house, I was like, you know, I don't know if I want to buy a house again because Mm -hmm. it's like an anchor. (laughs) It's like, I'm like vibrationally anchored to, I don't know. And so I don't know, but uh, like, all I know is what I need right now in this current Mm -hmm. moment. And I think sometimes making those like bigger decisions of what I need right now in this moment and following that, like, let me give you an example. Obviously, I was receiving all kinds of signs and and stuff while I was we were having these talks and as I was navigating this and I saw this random post on my Instagram Explorer feed and this woman, she said, I saved my marriage by ending it Mm. and I clicked on it and we had talked a lot about this because we both know I have I feel like most of my married friends who have like super solid relationships, almost all of them um broke up like they were together then they broke up whether that whether they divorced or like they had been dating and they broke up for a while and they got back together it's like a really common story with people anyway so I clicked on this woman's post and she said some she was saying there were things going on in the marriage and she divorced and they got back together it was like two or three months later 
<laughs> like it was like a really short divorce mm-hmm. and she was saying i wouldn't have changed it and there was something about a complete mm-hmm. legal closure mm-hmm. that like somebody from the outside might look at that and say you were only divorced for two or three months like just like separate you know or just like take some time for yourself and get back together why go through the whole legal process of that but i think sometimes it's that official and kind of dramatic closure that allows that time period to collapse to see the truth Mm -hmm. right versus staying in some version of that old container you can't really upgrade out of it Mm -hmm. right so you know we both had talked about i was like i'm excited to meet the new version of you Mm -hmm. and i want to meet the new version of you not like seeing you i want to be like whoa who's he today who's Mm -hmm. he now right and like i want you to meet the new version of me and when you live with somebody and see them every day you Mm -hmm. don't necessarily see them that way like Mm -hmm. for sure we should try but just being honest it's like i look at myself every day in the mirror (laughs) yeah like i don't necessarily notice Mm -hmm. like any drastic changes but somebody who only sees me once every you know it could be a month Mm -hmm. and somebody could be like wow your your energy is so different but Mm -hmm. to me it's the same Mm -hmm. you know so um we yeah are you know splitting up um and closing that container and like i'm it's been really hard it's been really emotional and i i'm really excited for both of us like i think we both really need this time and like i'm so grateful for everything i've i've learned from him and will continue to learn from him and um i i just really I don't know. You know, you don't know how it's going to go, but like I've never been in a situation, honestly, like with somebody I was in a romantic relationship with where we like, it was like, I could always like see the end, Mm -hmm. I guess. And I'm like, yeah, this is complete. And this is like, yeah, our contract is complete, but like, I really, as of right now, I can't imagine him not being in my life. Yeah. Like, and so I think that's a really beautiful opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause I haven't had that dynamic before, mm-hmm. you know? So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like a long winded version. Yeah. yeah. How do you, um, how do you think that this like correlates, I think with like the collective, cause as you were talking about the whole long-term life partner thing, I just keep coming to like, I wonder if our attachment to just finding my person to spend the rest of my life with, I mean, I don't wonder, I know that this mm-hmm. is like, it's attaching so much pressure and so much expectation energy to every single relationship and partnership that we enter in. And I'm just wondering if you have a sense, like after channeling this book and just through what you're going through, like, is it really in our highest and best to look for a life partner? Like is Mm -hmm. a life partner, even anything that, I mean, I'm not saying that it, I'm saying this as a person who's like in a long-term partnership, but is this something that really is serving our highest and best? Or is it just like, what if we were to look at it as, yeah, some people stay for a long time. Some mm-hmm. people might stay for 20 years, but I'm not attaching that like the rest of my life thing to it. I feel both can be true, mm-hmm. you know, because I think a big message in this book is detachment. Mm-hmm. But there is a strong like there is there are so many pros to a life partner, but it's mm-hmm. also understanding like I can go in with the energy of a life partner and also understand the truth of what's going on where like that life partner it might be just this this part of my life which right. when we talk about like i'm like i've lived so many lives within my life and i will right. continue to like I it think, was a life yeah partner. It, it was a life partner yeah. it was like for that part that that life within this mm-hmm. lifetime and i think that we either need to i don't know i want to say like we need to but i think that people like for me i and i've talked about this before like i i'm not a like, I don't think divorce is, like, bad or negative. Right. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, it's, like, if you're no longer happy together and if it's mm-hmm. not working anymore, like, clear. I think, obviously, there's a lot of, like, very logistic legal things that make it very difficult to separate. I I was learning about, I wasn't, like, learning about it. Like, this, again, popped up somewhere. Like, um, somebody was talking about in a certain Native American culture, they, every seven oh, years, yeah. come together as a community and with a partner and you know, they've completed the marriage contract and Mm -hmm. they decide as a community, is it for everybody's best for them to do another seven years or to change, to, to separate and Mm -hmm. get new partners. And I think, and I kind of joke about this, but I'm not really joking. I know it triggers people, but I think about like, a uh, any other, like, like a license, you get a marriage license. I'm like, I have to, I have to read, you know, you got to retake your driving test. 
like you gotta make sure it's still good it's like licenses can expire mm-hmm. and then what happens and I, I think there is something powerful to like do we choose each other again and again mm-hmm. and again and you might or you might not and i think the thing is that everybody has very different soul contracts and mm-hmm. i do know that there are some people that are that are really here to be with that be with a main partner mm-hmm. for a long 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 time there are other people who very just contractually it's like maybe you're gonna, you're like literally contracted to have a bunch of shorter relationships or you know five seven year relationships mm-hmm. like things like that it's just different depending on the person and i think for people to just understand like we all have our own life experiences and like love the one that that's true for you and that mm-hmm. that's natural for you so i think mm-hmm. we have different choices and we have different contracts but the thing about i do feel very strongly about commitment i feel very strongly personally about like you know the the value and they, they talk about this in the book like the value of committing to one person and all of the skills that builds for you and all the depth of the mirroring and all of the personal growth. And that, I think that's one of the many values of like that, that long-term like divine life partner, mm-hmm. which, you know, maybe is literally your entire lifetime or maybe it's for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. And maybe there's another one too, mm-hmm. but like to really get to the depths of yourself and to the depths of your connection to source. Like you do that through commitment and devotion to one person. And it's like, what do I, and, and this really hit me is this is like touched upon in this book. And then it came um, forward in that a podcast I did with Lo, the Oracle said this, and she was like, what happens when running is off the table? Like when you are in, when you're in a, like a contract with somebody when you're in this, a, a, a relationship with somebody where you've, you're devoted a lot of people just run but mm-hmm. it's like what happens when, hey we're in this mm-hmm. whether it's marriage or not you know like the guys don't care about marriage or not it's right. like it's a human thing do whatever the fuck you want but it's like there's a very powerful growth opportunity when it comes to like there's no running it's like we have to work through this and mm-hmm. so many people don't work through their shit or they're unwilling to see their own mirrors mm-hmm. and you know some sometimes um our best life partners can be the most triggering people to us because Mm -hmm. they're helping us learn the most. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think that's also the thing in like in in life partnership, we've got to get clearer for ourselves on what we want. Like, are you looking for a challenging growth experience or looking for a companion and a best friend? Like, are you looking for that passion and excitement? Mm -hmm. Like different people do different things for us. And I think a lot of people don't really think about it in that way. Like, and maybe you can get a lot of the same things from one person, but we're also not meant to try and get everything from one other person. Like people are mirrors for us and it can activate things within us. But at the end of the day, like it's Mm self-sourced, you know? And so this book was interesting because of what, what, um, came through i could feel it was almost like bridge energy of like Mm. from where we're at right now how do we kind of rethink relationships but they were all they were talking about like when you get to this vibrational place all this is going to change like with Mm -hmm. polarity for example Mm -hmm. like when we're fully balanced in our own divine masculine divine feminine how polarity will change um and when we're fully sourced like with our own joy and happiness and excitement like everything is going to change a little bit um and so we're kind of like in this bridge mm-hmm. experience, if, if that makes sense. So yeah. I know, I don't know. I think that personally, I think like a lot of people, I mean, we could go off about commitment problems, but I think it's interesting how many people avoid like devotion and commitment and they look for ways out of it. And I'll tell you, it's the same energy of like, yeah, I'm not surprised you can't build your own business right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like if I ran away every time shit got harder, things Mm -hmm. got mirrored to me or it wasn't working or Mm -hmm. I was in a shitty situation, like I would not be where I am today. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, I think there are a lot of people that stay in long-term relationships when they've been emotionally, energetically out for a long time Mm -hmm. and it's draining the life force energy from them Mm a hundred percent. And it's like the contract is up and everything in your life will stop moving when the contract is up. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you this, I've experienced this in, in past relationships. Like um, you know, my, my, the breakup I had before I channeled this book, it was like, everything was going wrong. Like I wasn't manifesting thing. Everything was stuck. But like, every, and I was so frustrated and it wasn't like anything was like blaringly wrong in the relationship. Like it wasn't like this person's toxic or ne- it wasn't any of that, you know, it just wasn't the right fit. Mm hmm. And so I never thought the relationship was the block. Mm. (laughs) And when I finally released the relationship, everything in my life started moving and I was 
so i was like what Mm -hmm. wait that was it Mm -hmm. i like i had no idea that wasn't like i hadn't connected that beforehand and now i realize this with and that's happened with friendships as well but romantic partnerships and i think i'm just speaking to this because i see a lot of people in our community who are like very caught and and you know they're they've been in a long-term relationship things are fine but there's a piece of them wants to explore something else and they're wondering if they're like making it up in their head Mm -hmm. and and they're also feeling kind of down and low frequency and like i don't know what i want to do with my life i don't know what i want my career to be they're like i don't know i don't know i don't know and it's like well when you're in a situation that's out of alignment you're gonna have no inspiration it's Mm -hmm. not gonna be clear Mm -hmm. and when your intuition has told you something you're not taking action on it it will feel like everything's turned off Mm -hmm. because it's already been said like you already know the next step Mm -hmm. and people are waiting for the next five steps and all you get is the next step yeah and that you know requires a lot of bravery but Mm -hmm. i think a lot of people don't realize like it's like people will say i can't leave my relationship because of money Mm -hmm. finances career like whatever and it's like but money career your health all these reasons you're saying like i can't leave because this is going on those problems exist because you're in the relationship Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like and i'm not saying that to blame the relationship but i'm talking about like i'm talking about it from the lens of we make choices of what we stay in and what we close up Mm -hmm. like we do and so when you're choosing that when you're choosing hey i'm i'm choosing this out of alignment frequency what happens with the rest of your body i've just chosen an out of alignment frequency Mm -hmm. so like let's not be surprised we're not feeling creative or inspired or money isn't flowing or we're having health symptoms um So I just think that we're going to be moving into a very different space. I I think right now it's more important than ever before for like more examples of real. And I know this sounds so buzzy. I just don't know what other word to use. Like, (laughs) um, like we need more embodied examples of real conscious relationships. Like people Mm -hmm. to, for people to really know what that looks like. What are the actual communication skills? Mm -hmm. What are the practices? What are the hard conversations Mm -hmm. you have? What are the things that you're thinking about? You know? And I think that, um one of the things i'm so grateful for with this most recent relationship is like our level of communication like i'm so proud of how we communicate and i know like you have this with your partner too like we have a lot of conversations that most people would never Mm -mm. they would never Mm -mm. voice to their partner but that is like because we love each other and understand each other so much and it's like both parties understand like what's meant to be is what's meant to be Mm -hmm. and the most important thing is that like we're happy and it's not about our ego it's about soul alignment and we Mm -hmm. put that we put soul alignment we put authenticity above all else even if that means my ego doesn't like this Mm -hmm. or it's uncomfortable and that is a really powerful thing to witness to experience it's extremely healing Mm -hmm. as much as like my heart has been broken i've also been healed through this and i think that most people don't even know how to navigate like to be honest because I didn't realize this until like the, the work I do in this world. Right. I'm like most people honestly don't know how to have just like a healthy relationship. Like the yeah. communication in most relationships is very poor. Mm-hmm. Just to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> like it's very poor. Yeah. And that's no one's fault. Like we're not taught. If you don't go out of your way to learn this, which most people don't do until something happens to mm-hmm. trigger it. Like you just don't know. You right. don't know what you don't know. You, you know what you've been modeled. And like, especially like the generations above us, like they grew up in a, like, you know, don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot more survival energy mm-hmm. to it of like, we have to be in partnership because if we don't, I, you know, we live in an age, like, you know, there was a time when we, like, you know, women couldn't have jobs, let alone like, I mean, women couldn't have credit cards, yeah. right? Things like that. It's like, yeah, we, we live in an age where like we can mm-hmm. support ourselves, you know, if we need to. And there's not necessarily that like survival piece. There is that very real biological, like, you know, I want to have babies kind of thing, but you know, yeah, you know how I feel about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm whatever. <laughs> that's, that's a little thing. Uh, you know, so I, I think that, um, people need like baseline communication skills yeah. and that starts with, and that's kind of the whole point of this book. They're like, you have to communicate to have a healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. Like we're talking about like healthy, let alone like high frequency mm-hmm. and conscious. And how can you communicate what you need or what you feel if you don't know? Yeah. Like you've got to, you've got to know that you've got to mm-hmm. have your own like self-reflection practices mm-hmm. and like mirrors for yourself and doing your own, your own work to like know how you feel. Mm-hmm. Otherwise you can't, you can't mm-hmm. even express it. Um, and, and that's also the value of like how we have each other to be those mirrors to help mm-hmm. us see, mm-hmm. to help like reflect back, like what we might be feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we, we do need each other, yeah. you know? So it's like, 
you know, they were saying step one was really how you step into your own sovereignty and like know yourself and co-create your own reality and all that manifestation mastery is like really about the self. And this is about, this is about collaboration. And that's like where the real, real happens. Mm-hmm. Like we always, we always say it's like, it's easy to be high vibe alone in your bedroom, mm-hmm. like listening to your binaural beats. But what happens when you're in a charged <laughs> discussion with somebody who disagrees with you? Yeah. How high is your frequency then? Like, yeah. how are you showing up then? It mm-hmm. really is like, how do I walk, you know, walk the talk? And I think that there's a lot of people talking it, but like, are we really walking it? And what does that look like in an everyday life? Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Like we just covered exactly like what you have to value in a divine partnership, like the truth and the authenticity to you Mm -hmm. over everything. Um, And like you said, you were receiving signs and you were feeling this confusion and everything, but was there a moment or was there something that hit you that was like, I have to bring this to him. Like is I have to bring this to him in order for both of us to still remain aligned in our highest truth. I, I definitely felt an energy of, and we both felt it. It was just like stuck, Mm -hmm. just like stagnant. Mm -hmm. And it was like, we were both trying to change a lot of habits. Like we could feel that for a while and we're both like, I'm going to do this. It's like, we could not change it. Mm -hmm. Like we both were just kind of reverting back to this, template we had set up and we like couldn't move it and it just kind of felt like I don't know like some growth had stopped in certain ways like mm-hmm. we were just like so deeply in the routine I don't know the energy just felt like still I think that's such a that's such a good like reflection for people because yeah. when I think back to any contract that's been up in my life mm-hmm. that's been yeah. like the symptom you yeah. know like that's what I felt with my business when I was like I feel like there's no way to pivot within this. Yeah, like it's the just container like, itself has to close. It's just still. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to do That's not saying like, you know, every day in a relationship or in a business is not right. going to feel exciting right. and growth. <laughs> it's like not like that, but it's like this chronic underlying, yeah. like it, it's a different kind of energy, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's not bad thing for us to have, you know, days, weeks, like whatever, where we're just in a routine and it's all chill and nothing wild's happening. But, there's just like a, it's just, it's not moving. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. We, we parked, you know, and how long are we going to hang out in the car? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it, it was, it's just like kind of a little bit of that energy. And I think we both really, the big thing was I know certain next steps I need to take in my own life, like outside, just who, who I, in my mission. And he also knows, and I know, right? Like we both know certain things that he are next part of his mission. And both of those things simultaneously, like those next pieces for him of his mission are things that he needs to do out of a relationship. And same with me, Mm -hmm. like, you know, it's just like, Mm -hmm. I think about kind of some of the next things I'm here to do. And I'm like, I just, it's gotta be me and my own energy for Mm -hmm. that. Um, and same thing with, with him, you Mm -hmm. know, and there, there's certain things we can upgrade and change and learn and shift, of course, while we're in partnership and that can be supportive. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things you just kind of it's like this has got to be on my own, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think it was definitely a lot more subtle than Mm -hmm. ever. And I think that was part of the lesson. Like, am I going to wait until things start Mm. going wrong or bad? And we talked a lot about that. I was like, I don't want to push this to the point of, you know, it's Grey's Anatomy season 100. And I'm like, you should have ended at season five because it was (laughs) fucking great. And we would have been good, right? Or you like drag it out to the Mm -hmm. point of this isn't good anymore. I'm like, I want us to, to love each other all the way through this and after this always and like let's like honor what we're both feeling and like close it while it's still good Mm -hmm. and we love each other and let ourselves recalibrate Mm -hmm. like and that has been really really beautiful Mm -hmm. you know so and i and i i feel like we we have always had good communication and i just feel like through this it it has opened up like Mm -hmm. a whole other a whole other level Mm -hmm. um which has been really really powerful and I think that's one of the big things for me I'm like there's that period after every breakup no matter how it goes that is some of the juiciest opportunities Mm -hmm. for personal growth reflection learning like because you suddenly see a lot of blind spots you have you know so I've noticed a lot of things within myself that I need to work on um and where I can grow and I know he has as well and so like that's what I'm going to do because Mm -hmm. it's like at the end of the day all like our relationships 
are, are meant to be containers to help us become the best versions of ourselves to get mm-hmm. to know ourselves more deeply and that's what it does sometimes it does that while you're in partnership and sometimes it does that when you're ending a partnership mm-hmm. um so that has been really really good for me and I, I think this like quote conscious uncoupling piece is really important because i think about like a contract with somebody a relationship and all that you learn in the relationship and if it's if it's meant to complete it's like maybe you get 50 mm-hmm. percent i'll say i literally say 50 percent of what the lessons you can get from that experience in the relationship and i literally think the other 50 percent mm-hmm. are the breakup process mm-hmm. and when you're able to hold space for each other and love each other and talk to each other and be with each other through that and navigate those conversations where it's not a I hate this. I like most people just bounce. Like they leave. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm done. I want to be in my own energy field. And I get there's obviously like, you know, you got to have that. Like there, there are obviously days through this where it's like, I need to be in my own field, but also, Hey, I've been thinking about this and can we talk about this? Like those are really uncomfortable situations, uncomfortable conversations. And I have been so grateful like that we've navigated those all with so much comfort Mm -hmm. like i you know like you have so much love for somebody like i can say this to you Mm -hmm. and you're not going to receive it defensively Mm -hmm. so that's the thing about both of us that i'm really grateful for is like one of the things i love most about him um is he takes feedback so well and i'm the kind of person like you can say anything to me like i don't really get triggered like like, say whatever to me you know you can be pretty rough with me because i'm that's just how i talk you know and he's one of those people that can really meet me there like we can just say whatever and nobody gets defensive or Mm -hmm. feels like any you know what i mean yeah and that allows us to go so so deep with each other Mm -hmm. and explore each other um and explore ourselves in a like really safe container Mm -hmm. so i think you know one of the big things he has really taught me has been about safety um and what it really feels like to like to really be loved in in a safe space and he has healed a lot of my abandonment issues 100 mm-hmm. percent. like that's been a deep wound for me um and he, this is you know interestingly enough this the breakup is what really like healed these abandonment issues for mm-hmm. me because he did not abandon me mm-hmm. through the closure mm-hmm. you know yeah so and it's so brave of both of you and it's interesting that you know you use that word too because that's what i was thinking the whole time was just choosing the bravery um and i think in a way that's also like embodying just that divine love you Mm -hmm. know it's like can i can i see someone through the eyes of source which is through the eyes of detachment as well and so it ultimately is just this huge lesson on detachment of like i can love you so much and as you always say you know and still this is over and this is closed and our dynamic is changing um but I still truly see you with those pure eyes of love and it doesn't have to be Mm -hmm. anyone's fault or blame or anything like that. It's just simply that was what was meant. And that was the lesson. Yeah. And it's like, I love you so much that like, I I, I don't like loving someone is not wanting them to change. Right. Right. It's like, and holding someone to their highest potential is different than wanting Mm -hmm. them to be different. Mm -hmm. And when we both like map out, honestly, like, what do you, what do I want and need in a partner right now? Mm -hmm. And there are things like that we're not giving each other, Mm -hmm. like loving that person so much where it's like, can I admit that I can't give you what you want right now? Because like, I mean, right now that's kind of at a place where we're at, Mm -hmm. like both of us just like very logistically, um can't give each other what we want right now in our lives in a relationship Mm -hmm. like really with time for us you know and it's interesting for us so much of it is very like logistic and I think this is also one of the reasons why I'm very grateful for his his spiritual foundation Mm -hmm. you know like And for so long, I did not think that was important to me, like to have a super spiritual partner. And through that, the last, the breakup, like before I wrote this book, I realized I need that. I have to have that. And so that is like, I mean, that's worldview, Mm -hmm. you know? And so we wouldn't be able to navigate this this way if we both didn't understand these concepts, like, you know, non-attachment and like trusting what's for me and timing Mm -hmm. and divine timing and like those, and like, I don't want to force, you know, I want to allow. And so it's like, we're like, okay, let's, there's a lot of emotions here and our minds maybe don't, don't want this. 
but let's look at what's going on and like very logistically there like these things are bumping up against each other and that's some kind of sign like this this isn't right you know um and so can we both kind of like honor that with with love and give, give ourselves the space that we need um and it's like you can't see the truth like we can't see the truth of our resonance until we're both fully mm-hmm. in our authenticity mm-hmm. that's what we both landed at like it's like I need to be fully in my authentic self right now, like living the life, ex- my life exactly mm-hmm. as I want it and creating that fully just in my own field and him simultaneously. And then you come together and you see like the truth of is there alignment or not? Mm-hmm. Um, so it just goes back to, you know, knowing yourself and, yeah. and, and living your life as you want. But yeah, it's definitely been an emotional, you know, experience. And um, I'm very grateful for for him and for it and I have so much love for him and um you know this I think it just <laughs> just like the, I, it's so corny but I'm like I can't I actually can't believe how much this fucking book helped me <laughs> like <laughs> like you know what I mean it's like my own book that I yeah. I'm like fuck like like in that I think that's the thing that I, I love about this work that I do now like that I can receive mm-hmm just as much as I give Mm -hmm. like for me to write this whole book Mm -hmm. and like pour so much time and energy into it and like how this is healing me right now Mm -hmm. like I'm like great (laughs) like (laughs) fuck yeah you know um and it really it helped me so much through this process um and it helped him Mm -hmm. so much through this process like this this book you know so it's like a testament Mm -hmm. like for me of like how much it matters Mm -hmm. um and sometimes like why the fuck am i writing this you know it's (laughs) like why am i letting some non-physical entity use my hands like (laughs) and then i have an experience like this and i'm like thank god i did yeah thank god i did because it was it was you know probably it was my most important tool Mm -hmm. through through all of it um and yeah i think like this experience it's like i always wanted to be that the person that could have breakups i guess like this um or separations and here I am living it Mm -hmm. and I'm really grateful and that that is a co-creative experience like that's Mm -hmm. not just a me thing that also is that's a him thing Mm -hmm. and like what we're able to to create together and Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of like our next level um as a collective of when we're all on this wavelength like how differently we can move through Mm -hmm. these experiences and maybe we can get to a place where uncoupling separation divorce like doesn't always have that connotation of like mm-hmm. it's going to be messy or mm-hmm. it's a lot of work or it's nasty or all mm-hmm. these things that we assume like maybe as a collective we can change those assumptions yeah and it also like to your point like we don't have to wait until it gets bad mm-hmm. because we have the we have that inner compass of we have to be authentic to ourselves and so it's time to close it now and because i'm closing it now we still do have that love for each other yeah. and so it doesn't even get to be messy yeah and that's the 5d shift everyone <laughs> <laughs> there you, know, you have it <laughs> there you have it it's a 5d shift no i'm just kidding um but yeah so that is you know a big part of the story of this book i'm really excited for people to read it if pe- anybody has not picked it up i highly encourage you to if it Go resonates it. <laughs> with you there are so many journal prompts in here like the thing is that so much of this book are just good questions mm-hmm. you know they ask a ton of questions and i i never. i think i mean i don't even know how many journals i filled up like it, you know better than anybody how long it took me to edit like edit this because yeah. i was reading it and it was i would have to go sit for like three hours and process mm-hmm. what it was activating within me it was so viscerally felt mm-hmm. in me like i it was i mean it is pure energy work in a book um and i feel like it's really changed like the template i'm living from in terms of the all of the relationships in my life like like in terms of my friendships, romantic partnerships, family, like I feel like it literally downloaded like a new template into Mm. me and I'm seeing everything differently and I'm feeling that Mm -hmm. change in all my dynamics and it's just amazing. It's Mm -hmm. incredible. So that's, you know, a bit of my story of this book. If anybody wants to pick it up, you can go to Amazon Mm -hmm. and do so. Um, And if you go to the divine codes of love.com, the codes of divine love oh yeah sorry the codes of divine love.com we're in the vortex um the codes of divine love.com you can learn more about it there 
And if you submit an Amazon review, you get a free love meditation. So isn't that fun? So uh, thanks for holding space. Of course. (laughs) Thank you for sharing. And so many people are learning through your story and you are showing the template for what it's going to look like. And so thank you for living it for us and sharing about it. Thank you. Happy to. (laughs) 